the biggest percentage of Uganda's population is 30 years and below. In this election, young people will determine the course of our nation. Whoever wins will have gone through with the support of the youth because of their numerical strength. But do the young people in Uganda understand the power that is in their demographic? Do they have particular interests? What are the challenges faced by female youth in the national politics as we head to 2021 general elections? My guests this evening are youth and all female. They are Gweni Murunji Vidaro, running for Youth MP Western Uganda. Oliver Mutesi, running for National Female MP. And Lydia Namayengo Njuba, running for Mukono District Woman MP. Good evening, ladies. Thank you so much for having honored our invitation. It is a first for me to have a panel of only ladies on my show. So I've, I've made a record, first of all. And uh, every time I'm always having men, and sometimes I'm accused of not having a panel but a mano. Thank God today <laughs> it's not a mano, it's a, it's a I don't know what you're going to call it. A panel. <laughs> it's a panel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But thank you so much. You ladies and others who are not here have dared to dream to get into the murky world of politics and i'm going to start in the middle for a reason the likes of you make the saying an apple does not fall far away from the tree come true look a daughter of a military general trying to oust or to replace a son of a military general who competed against a son of a military general? Northern Uganda is represented by a son of a military general. What's up with the military families of Uganda, Jenny? Uh, thank you, Mr. Kamara. I'm honored to be here today. I'm Gweni Murunji, uh, contesting for Western Youth MP. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you so much. So according to your question, I guess uh, uh, we are here actually not for a competition as uh, children of the generals or whatsoever, but we are here as legislators of tomorrow or today. So first of all, uh, me coming to replace uh, a, a son's general or whoever was there, the son's general who was competing with the son's general, is uh, uh, to me is I think we are trying to fight what the youth want. We as the youth, we are actually facing a lot. Uh, for example, Mr. Kamara, uh, uh, as I think to me, you shouldn't be here right now because as the youth, we are going through a lot. And it's us, us, who are supposed to fight for our rights. So um, I guess uh, my coming to the race is actually not... I, I know you'll ask me why, uh, why I'm coming into politics. Poli politics is, is actually, it's not there. It's coming to legislate. I'm coming to legislate because maybe, as you said, that uh, children of the generals and whatsoever, uh, maybe uh, at some point, legacy goes through the family. So maybe I am here uh, for legacy purposes and maybe uh, to still fight for the rights of the youth. Okay, I, th I think maybe I should have started the other way because you need to introduce yourselves to the people of Uganda. Mm -hmm. So let me say this again. Uh, Gweni, who are you? Um, um, Gweni Murunji is uh, uh, a daughter of my parents arrested a few months ago. And uh, I am a political scientist. Uh, who, who, who is currently a farmer. I do farming and I am on another side a businesswoman. So politics, I think, uh, ran into my blood as my parent was a politician and, and uh, NAMI office, as you said. Okay, so okay. I, I'm going to ask the same generic question before we just dig deep into it. So I'm coming to you. Oliver Mutesi, the last time I called you, you told me you're somehow in Luengo, you're trying to know, tro trot the entire country. Oliver Mutesi, welcome to the show. Who is Oliver? Thank you. Um, 
Mr. Kamara, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I greet you all, the uh, Ugandans who are viewing. My name is Mutesi Oliver. I am a youth leader. I've been a Secretary of Student Affairs on the Executive of National Youth Council for the last four years. Uh, I think we are still running the office. We haven't uh, voted other people yet. I'm a political scientist. I did a political science from Mackay have a master's in public administration, and have a master's in gender and women's studies. You have a master's in public administration, and a master's, <laughs> master's in gender. Yeah, and okay. women's studies. Even though you look 21. <laughs> <laughs> <With no respect. laughs> uh, so, uh, well, Lydia Namayengo Njuba, the last time I checked, you're working with the civil society of Uganda, but that's what I know. Who are you? Uh, I want to greet you all, dear fellow Ugandans the young people out there who are watching, and the women, and the whole world at large. Nama Yengo Lydia Njura is a married woman. I am a human rights activist. I am a lecturer for constitutionalism and political development. Where? I am a leader. I have been a leader in Democratic Party. I have been a leader in Catholic Church. I have been a leader in, in the Kingdom of Uganda. I am a leader. I am a human rights activist. I am a, I'm a freedom fighter. And I'm a person who is aspiring to be the woman MP, Mokono District. All right. At least Uganda, you have introduced yourself to Uganda. Now Uganda understands who you are. These are, men, these are women of substance, women who are educated and women who have dared to dream and you want to lead. You are coming in a special interest group. The last time I checked, there was a research done by a reputable organization called Africa Leadership Institute, headed, I think, by Mr. David Polkow. And they found that most interest special interest groups in parliament have performed so poorly. What is it that Oliver Mutesi can do in that parliament, which is going to be the 11th parliament, for you to create a change? Yet, repeatedly, researchers have shown special interest groups have not done much, apart from people <coughs> with disability. What's your game plan? Um, my manifesto is um, our manifesto, I should say. It talks about uh, we're going to be three things. We're going to be very few. Um, one, we are looking at um, youth structures, number one. I will start with where I've been. I'm being selfish. <laughs> that uh, youth leadership, most cases, has faced challenges that we are put in office and we are not funded and we can't do much. At the end of the day, you can't uh, advocate for youth when you do not have funding. That is going to be one of my manifesto. Number two, we are going to talk about unemployment. Unemployment, and we're going to cluster it into two. Number one, we have the educated young people who do not have jobs, and the uneducated young people who are also supposed to be looked at. Uh, the educated ones, we are advocating for number one, retirement age should be reduced to 55. Number two, we should have gazetted jobs for young people, and we should have, number three, percentage of young people that whenever there is recruitment, a, f a specific percentage should be given to the young people. And they say 50%. If there are 10 But jobs are you aware, Oliver, that in this country we don't only have a problem of unemployment, but quite a number of Ugandan youth, with all respect, are also unemployable? Um, as young people, we shouldn't rush to, to, to judge young people, I should say. Uh, we shouldn't rush to what makes you think they're unemployable, you know? That is a question. They lack in skills, they lack in values, exactly. they lack in all uh, those uh, core skills that are, imp are, are important. Yeah, that's what I'm going. But in most cases, it's about values, honesty, integrity, you know, empathy and stuff like that. That can drive uh, the people these forward. People and unfortunately, you can't get these things from a school. Uh, what I can say that uh, usually there is a saying that uh, leaders or, okay, society shapes people. We need to go back to society. What are our values? What do we believe in? You remember when we were young, you could, uh, a kid steals a doll from a, from a neighbor, and then um, the mother tries to help them hide it. So it goes back to our society that we need to have mindset change to young people that if we are going to, uh, we're going to have uh, good uh, employee, employable people, I should say, good employees, it also comes back to us as a society. We should groom our children to be employable. So I should say that uh, we shouldn't judge young people alone, but also society itself. Okay, Lydia, 
the last time I checked, you are working with Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy, a civil society organization that is also helping in trying to advance the governance and make an impact there. But then you appear in a red beret. I suppose you are in Noop. Mm. I also would have known you for, as a young lady in the Democratic Party, the party of truth and justice, Uganda's oldest party. For heaven's sake, how do you show your back to truth and justice? What ideals are you now following? Patrick and the, uh, and, the, and the Ugandans who are actually watching us right now, we do not show our back to truth and justice. Truth and justice is one of the values of democracy and good governance that you can never be able to throw away. And no political party in Uganda or elsewhere in the world can own truth and justice. It's about the values that Ugandans believe in. It's about the values that you as an individual believe in. So it is not just about belonging to a political party. It is about believing in the values and ideas of a given political setting. Now, when we were in the Citizens Coalition of Electoral Democracy in Uganda, we, ha we actually held so many different campaigns advocating for young people actively participating in the electoral process, in the leadership process in this country. And one of the things that actually my friend has talked about is about the youth structures. It's about unemployment. It's about all these kinds of things. Now, I want to remind my sister that when we held a campaign, which was called actually the My Voice campaign, that was geared towards amplifying the youth voices in electoral democracy in Uganda, we actually found out that almost 99% of the youth structures belong to the NRM. Now, that actually implied something, that the youth structures have not actually been able to have a fair democracy. They have not been able to have a fair participation of all the different political parties in this country called Uganda. And it's actually seen the same case. Even when we are having the youth elections happening right now, starting from the village youth council, right through the parish, sub-county, and even now when we are at the municipality level, you have seen the same cases happening. Continuous voter bribery happening in the youth elections, continuous intimidation happening in the youth elections, continuous grabbing of voters, vote rigging, all those scenarios have actually continued happening. Now, when you talk about rectifying youth structures, one of the recommendations we actually recommended was that we actually did not need to have youth MPs in Uganda. You cannot have a youth MP who is actually going to represent over 40 districts and then you expect them to be able to perform. If an MP representing a constituency that actually has two sub-counties fails to perform to the maximum, then how do you expect a young person who does not even have the resources to move around 40 districts of the eastern region or even the central region to be able to perform as expected? That is why when AFLI conducted a study, it's when they came up with actually res res results and said, you know what, youth members of parliament are not performing, uh, uh, the army members of parliament are not performing because of the bigger consumers that are actually held and because they don't have enough resources to be, to be able to actually have but, that. But guess what? The people in the special interest group, people with disabilities, performed excellently and yet are even more challenged than the youth and the military and workers. So how do you reconcile those parts? I think that you reconcile those values by looking at how the youth members of parliament are being elected. First of all, the youth members of parliament actually come through an electoral college system of government, of, of voting. A, a leader who does not have an entitlement to you, if you did not vote that leader into power, they do not actually have to come and account to you. Okay, let, so me, you let, me, let me shed a light into your own uh, area, which is Mukono, because you, you're, you're running for Mukono District Woman MP, right? Yeah. And, and, and you put on a beret, but I've just learned that you actually denied a flag. Yes. So that must be hitting hard. Yes. So, your own party have not denied seen the qualities flag. that you seem to have and possess, mm. and I know you, you love Noop, but mm. they don't love you back. Uh, Patrick, we do not go into this struggle for justice, for good governance, for democracy in Uganda because of a political party. We don't either even go to, into this party because of an individual. I went into this party, of, I actually did not go to the party, I went to the movement because I believe in the values of the movement. I have been an activist, like I've told you. I have been fighting for justice, even within the civil society movement, even within the Uganda Kingdom. I have been a person who has been fighting for justice. Yes, but and for, for a for person who fights for justice like I know, for a person who has made the positive noise like I've had, for you to go to, I don't know where your headquarters is, I suppose it is, it is somewhere in Kamocha, and be denied to carry that flag, yet your supporters think you've done much more, that really hits hard, doesn't it? It really hits hard because hold those, there. Hold those there. Hold Patrick, there. Yes. because just, those, hold there. the different injustices that have actually been seen into the vetting process in the NUP are actually seen everywhere. And we want to assure Ugandans that we do not want person to go and choose NUP. We want voters to go and choose 
a candidate based on the candidate's qualities. Yeah, but there's going to be... We belong. A, a, I do belong but, to but people Lydia, power. Lydia I Namayango, may not Lydia belong. Namayango, there's going to be a, 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 an official flag bearer of yes. NUP in Mukono. We have Even put in though a petition. you worked hard. Yes, Even though we, you claim to have worked hard. I do not claim to have worked hard, Patrick. <laughs> yes. I may not be an official flag bearer because I know the corruption scandal that actually have, have happened. I know okay. the vetting process that is unfair. <laughs> I know the captivity of, of NUP right now by the difference. By right. like a cool so it's, some gonna, people. it's going to be unfair because you, you don't have a flag of NUP mm -hmm. and you don't speak for it. So I'm not going to go deep into it. I'm not going to only talk no, about... No, I, I am speaking as... I'm not speaking for NUP. I I'm am saying. actually speaking as an individual yeah, who, says, who subscribes yeah. to people power. That's why I want to leave so, it. I want, that's why I want to leave it at that level. <laughs> but just hold your fire there. And I want to go to Gweni. You, you can actually see that many Ugandans feel, especially the young people, in every party where they are, whether it's the Democratic Party or NRM or UPC or whatever, they just feel there's an element of unfairness to them. And guess what? You have the numbers. You have the numerical strength. What do you need to do as young people so that, you know, the leaders who are in power and a bit older can start taking you very seriously? Um, on that, I think, uh, like she said, unemployment. Basically, unemployment has raided all of us. But uh, I think it comes with uh, the skilling. Basically, you cannot keep weighing uh, a sheep when you're not feeding it. Yes, we've been given uh, what to use, but we don't know how to use it. Basically, if we were using uh, the knowledge, the skills, and, and, and basically what we think could help us use what we have, I think we would be better. So to me, I think um, as, a, as a leader, as a young leader, what could be better for the youth is, uh, first of all, to skill us, to skill us to what we need to do. You have taken a choice, and your choice is farming. Yes. And, and, and why is it that some mis most people may not even see that? I do not think there was a government or whatever, a personal choice to go into farming and to go into business. So why is it some of your colleagues, even if the land is there and the energy is there, it's because, because and yet they are that not is where Uganda has a comparative advantage. They haven't taken that advantage. Mr. Kamara, it's because we are not sensitized about actually, for example, farming. If we were sensitized enough, I was sensitized myself that basically when I enter farming, I could do better. I started up small, and uh, by the time I, I, I started growing and growing, I found out that actually farming is something much more than sitting in an office and roll yourself in a round chair. So uh, what we need to do, I think, is to sensitize the youth. That is actually one of the things that really brought me into the youth politics. We should not look at uh, being in an office, employed, earning really pennies, thinking that it's the best thing we need to do. The best thing as the young leaders, what we need to do is wake up, work for yourself. You know, you, you are vying for the National Female Youth MP. In other words, you are moving from Kalangala to Koboko, from Kotido to Kisoro. That needs a lot of, lots of money. You know, with all respect, who's your financier? Um, we, have, um, we, we have friends like you and who, who try to give a hand. It's not easy, but... Uh, People come out and help, give a hand here and there. So yeah. you're fundraising? Yeah, we, we do. Okay, uh, basically, what is the commonality do you find among the young people of Uganda? Because you have the latitude to talk to many different tribes, different regions, different beliefs and backgrounds. What do you see the common picture of the Ugandan youth? Uh, the common picture is that uh, we have the same challenges. Uh, though we might live in different areas, but we have the same challenges. As I talked about, we have, in leadership, we all have offices that are non-functional, and we need to advocate for adding uh, resources to functionalize these offices because they affect our, our careers. For example, when you meet a sub-county chairperson, this person has not had an office for five years. They are non-funded people behind them, they think they're actually having money. When they go back to ask for a certain position mainstream, they use it against them. So which, these structures are supposed to be used as breeding grounds. When you come to these other young people, we have unemployment, as I've talked about it. I had talked about, first of all, the educated youth and their challenges. 
But now we have young people whom I call non-skilled and not educated people. They have challenges and they have not gone to school. So we need to empower them in a different way. For example, we have a lot of tax burden on these young people. We need to make sure we come up with a win-win situation. Tax waivers, that is number one. We need to come up with tax waivers on young people who are trying to come up in businesses. If we are, if we are how can I call it? If we are determined to fight unemployment, a person in Koboko, a person in Chotera, a person in, in, in Chisoro, as a young person, they all face the wrath of a tax. Young people want to come up in the morning, they sell their piece of land, they sell their cows, they start business because that's all they have. But again, all this startup capital is being swallowed in taxes. Just like the way they give investors tax waivers. My prayer would be that also young people should be given tax waivers or tax holidays for them to start, to okay. start and take off. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. We, because, uh, uh, Lydia, you know, L Lydia, wait, um, okay. uh, you find yourself that uh, the same tax taken off the person who has been in the field of business for 20 years, the same tax that is being taken off from a young person who is trying to come up and make ends meet, how do you expect this young person to come up? Because all the 5 million is going to be swallowed up in the tax. So my prayer would be, we have the same challenges when it comes to that. So we should come up with a what? With a common solution to all of this. So, L Lydia, I know you're running for woman MP in Mukono, but with all respect, I also know you as a young leader. The people of Uganda are largely young people. And, you know, we are looking to you, the young people, to salvage our country in case we are going a different direction. And should things go wrong, Lydia, we are going to point our fingers at you, young people, because whoever is going to win this election is going to win on the backs of young people. So what is it that you think can be done so that young people can have a voice that is taken seriously mm. and young people can no longer be hoodwinked to lie to? Probably they can say enough. I think that, Patrick, one of the things that actually has to be done is to actually ensure that most of the young people deny anybody a chance of suppression because most of the young people are actually being suppressed by either the older politicians or actually the other young people or actually even the political parties themselves. So if a young woman or a young man accepts to be suppressed, then that means actually they're losing it all. Number two, the second thing that actually young people have to be able to do is to actually deny the chance of accepting commercialization of politics. Monetization of politics is one of the things that is killing politics in this country. And if anything goes wrong, like you actually said, if the wrong decisions are going to be made in this country and they actually have accepted to be influenced by the money in the politics of this country, then everything is going to be wrong. But if the young people actually stand up and say we are actually saying no to money in politics and you're actually going for qualities, we're going for issues, we're going for values, we're going for ideas, we're going for the competence of a leader is actually coming up to stand up in this position, then I think that the future of this country will be brighter. Number three would actually be empowerment. You will realize that in many cases these days, not so many young women and men have mentors. Mentorship is still a very key challenge among young people. So many young women, for instance, in different political parties and in different political settings, may lack who they look up to to be able to lead them. You will find that some of the people who have been longer in the political parties are either fighting for their own selfish interests, or actually they are either fighting for how much they are going to safeguard their own constituencies, but they never look to how much legacy are they living as leaders, how many leaders have they been able to build in their political parties, how many leaders have they been able to build in their different movements. So if young women are able to be empowered, if they are able to get mentors, to mentor them into the world of leadership, the world of politics, the world of determining and making decisions as people without the influence of others, I think that something will be able to change okay. in this country. When you stand for female, no, not for youth MP Western Uganda, and your constituency is going to span from Kisoro to Kiriandongo, for heaven's sake, those are about 30-something districts. And, and, and like, and, and like uh, Lydia was saying, I ha there are examples of members of parliament who have failed to deliver in a constituency of merely two sub-counties. And perhaps you're even going to get the same resources. Gwenny, what's going to be your approach to such a huge geographical entity? Um, my, okay, basically we have 37 districts in the western Uganda. And uh, yes, we've, we've gone to these districts. We've really campaigned. We've met these people. We've uh, made uh, good uh, connections with them. And to me, what I think is um, 
basically you cannot touch base everywhere. That's the honest truth. But of course, as a politician, you would want to say, yes, I will serve to my interests. I will, I'll, as, as because these districts are really very many, I will not say that I will really touch base from Chiriandongo to, Ma, uh, to, 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 to Chigezi at the same time. No. But I will, basically, I know what the youth go through. It's what I, I'm going through. So I'll try to voice out, to advocate for what the youth are supposed to have. I'll have to meet these people. As a farmer, actually one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to put up to, for the youth is uh, to, to, to advocate more of the youth in agriculture. I would want most of the youth to join agriculture, to join me. Yes, it's not that most of the youth, actually most of the youth don't like agriculture. But what I'm looking at is when I have put up something for the youth, like I deal in greenhouses, Basically, when I go to Chigezi and say I have put up a greenhouse, it will mean that I'll have to go to Chigezi most of the times to check but out you know, on you're that. you're talking about farming, and you have to, one of the biggest things that you require is land. Young people may not have having land. You Mr. Kamara, I, I do farming of uh, five greenhouses on a two-acre land. Uh, our president has always uh, advocated for a four-acre model. I do a two-acre model. I have five greenhouses, I have a fish pond, I have, I have, I have uh, pigs, I have very many things on just a two-acre model. And what we all know is that there are no villages that do not have land. People have land, but they've not utilized the land. So here I am to actually uh, use this as an opportunity to take the youth through this. So as I get back to your question of how I'm going to uh, look up to these very many districts, as I was saying, as an agriculturalist, if I put up a farm in uh, Chiriandongo, Masindi, where, uh, I'll have more time to interact with my youth and know what they go through. So, you, so you want to use your example so that people can learn from you yes. and you think we have an advantage in agriculture? Yes, well, a lot. Uh, Oliver, you know, Uganda, East Africa's biggest chunk of arable land is here in Uganda. In fact, we're even lucky, almost every village in this country, there's some stream running somewhere, so we have water. Even Karamoja, which is semi-arid, if you compared Karamoja to Israel, Karamoja would be a, a, a green and fertile place. So why do you think that uh, we, first of all, you are from the NRM party, you are youth, of the NRM party, why is it that the NRM party that you love so much seem to have, you know, neglected an area where we could have a comparative and competitive advantage? In fact, if we went to agriculture as a country, there's no any other country in the region that can even dare to compete because we have everything in our favor. Why hasn't Uganda done that? Um, I think uh, that's a wake-up call. Uh, like my manifesto has been very clear. My manifesto has been suggesting that uh, we need um, to put funding specifically in agriculture, in uh, three sectors, in uh, fish farming, in uh, um, um, cattle keeping, I should say that. How do I call that? I mean, I'm a political scientist. <laughs> and uh, farming itself. Um, my manifesto, I've been airing out that, that uh, first of all, it will boost our being that uh, we are the food basket of the region. It will give us mileage in terms of that. Number two, it will increase on our agriculture. Number other in our revenue. Number three, it will also, it will like a trap. But, but, but are you aware, just during this pandemic, and I mean probably we're even lucky that the pandemic hit when Uganda <coughs> had food, Matoke, in areas, maybe in Western Uganda, in some places it was going for 1,000, 2,000. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they could even throw it away. Mm -hmm. That people have reached a level sometimes that can produce so much and just look at their produce because they don't have a market. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, only, only or that. even low Our prices. problem sometimes is not even what Lack of price produce. regulation. Uh, uh, our problem is, is the prices, uh, is the is prices and, and storage and stuff like that. Um, like, I've always, uh, like I also suggested in my manifesto, the same manifesto that because you've not allowed me to tell you everything. So, uh, but manifesto, I've been uh, sharing with the young people. I've emphasized that we need 
to create a market for the young people. That when you get a loan, let me give an example, that if government gives you a loan with the, uh, after removing, because uh, we've been complaining about uh, so many um, criteria, number one, it has so many, they give you restrictions, you have to bring a land title, you bring a guarantor. So my argument has always been that if government is indeed um, determined to fight unemployment through giving loans, it should remove those so many restrictions that young people are free to get that money. For example, the capital venture fund, you either bring a land title or two guarantors. Find yourself that a young person like me, I can't have a title, even my own dress is for my parents, they have bought it for me. So how can I have a what? A land title. How can you be saying that a lady with a master's degree <laughs> and a two master's degree? Can you do that? Because uh, it's no, been she's paid. Even the government is putting it's money been, it's been it's given. <laughs> it's paid <laughs> by my parents. So, I mean, you yeah, but 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 then, still but my but parents' then, responsibility. Then there's something extra fundamentally wrong because so, so if you can acquire that so much. Because uh, and you, cannot you are the pinnacle home. of Uganda's yeah. education. That's why I'm coming out to talk mm -hmm. about unemployment. Because uh, I am the best person to talk about it. I have all the masters, but I don't have a job. So I'm the best person mm -hmm. to come and True. advocate You're for young people. You're in this for a job, right? No. I'm saying, I, if a person like me, who has the qualifications, I'm not employed. So I know best how it pinches. So this is why I have to come out and talk about unemployment. Yeah, but Gweni went to farming. Gweni went to business. Uh, yeah, you know, she is in business. We all can't be in business. So we are talented differently. Okay. So, uh, Lydia, uh, you, you know, because you are not in the, in the direct youth she has the of capital. politics. I don't and, have the capital. Yours is different. <laughs> I, just, I just want to see how, you know, because you came putting on a beret, and so you reminded me the, the people power. Uh, with all respect, when I come to here in Kampala and the Greater Kampala, you see, you know, you feel the pulse of people power on the streets of Kampala. But can I feel that pulse of people power outside the greater Kampala? You know, can it be not just Buganda-centric? Patrick and the, the other people watching, the pulse of people power is in the hearts of Ugandans. You may not be able to feel it on the streets of, especially areas outside central region, especially in the western region or in the other region because of so many issues. But I want to first tell you that the pulse of people is felt in other regions because you have vice presidents coming from the different regions and That's they're exactly. actually doing a lot of work. And they actually have been able to nominate candidates on different levels of leadership, including local government and even members of parliament as well have been vetted. Even when the process is not done. Yeah, not I know Zadriga, I know Mujisha, I know Nambeshe, I know those individuals. Yes. But I'm saying, and, uh, and, and, and with all respect, but if I'm in Kampala, I can feel it. If yes. I'm in Wakiso, I can feel it. Mm. When you start moving away, you know, <laughs> the, it, it begins it also to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. and, and when and, I give and you I'm this, explaining. this, when I give you this, as you who truly loves the party, Mm. then you have to think I'm your strategic ally in some way because mm. I'm giving you true information that I've seen. Mm. So you yes, need to and, think. And, and Patrick, I'm telling you, what I'm saying is that you may not be able to feel the pulse as much as you feel it in the central region because of various reasons. First is actually security. There's a lot of intimidation and threats from the people outside the central region who actually come and identify with people power or with change. It does not take away the fact that in their hearts they feel satisfied with unemployment, they feel satisfied with suppression and, and discrimination, they feel satisfied with poor service delivery, they feel satisfied with the continuous constitutional uh, amendments that actually not fit the, the people of Uganda. They still see the problems, the governance question that is affecting Uganda, although they might be able to come on the streets and actually show you the powers that you want to feel. But in the hearts of Ugandans, including within the members of the NRM, who are still standing on the, on the flag bearership of NRM, they actually support people power. And they even feel the injustices within you this know, country uh, and the governance You know what country. I have seen, Lydia? Yes. Is that people power probably is the best thing that has happened in NRM. And let me explain. Because you seem to have totally caused a storm within the opposition. And people are moving either from FDC or from the Democratic Party, like yourself, and joining people power. Uh, and, and so if... Somebody's get to, is to get worried. It should be Patrick Amuriat, oh boy, and the Honorable Nobat Mao, because their parties seem to have lost members. I just want you to see more, convincing these young people, convincing others in yellow to start putting on red and a beret. Mm. Then I know that the journey of a thousand miles, you have actually taken many steps to begin it. Patrick, what I want to assure you that is that putting on a red beret is a symbol and is very important. 
But even when you do not put on a red beret, Patrick, you could be one of those Ugandans who actually don't have the fair pay that you're supposed to be able to get. People power just signifies the people who actually advocate for change, who are fighting against injustices in this country, who are fighting against bad governance. It is not just about Mao fighting for his party. That is being selfish. It's not about Amuriat fighting for his party. That's being selfish. It's not even about YKM7 fighting for his party. It's about the issues that we're talking about in this country called Uganda. It's, it's about the 35 years of the regime. It's about the human rights violation. It's about the Ugandans who are dying because of the illegal detention, the okay. illegal arrest and the LDUs. Okay. So even when they don't put on the rates like you, or even Mutesi, or even this lady here, they still <laughs> believe that there's something that has to be done, or else they wouldn't actually have been able to come up to uh, aspire yeah, for leadership I, I'm positions. I'm expressing that, Lydia, because of what I've been able to see. I've seen a wave of people move in mass from one party to another. And I'm thinking, majority of Ugandans, at least what we see or we are told, because NRM boasts of having 11 million registered supporters in their, in, their, in their party. And yet, just the same one of the Abakama's party, a uh, uh, to commission, has 16 million people. Mm. So if NRM just told their people to turn up on the day of voting, mm. it's a, Then we shall be left it, with 4 million. It's, it's, it's game Patrick, over. first it's of game all. Over. No, it's so, not game over. First of all, you actually you, need to you understand need, that you sometimes you with some need, statistics, you need, yes, but some you people need, from the yellow book of the NRM you need, do not actually go into that yellow book voluntarily. You, even when you are in Mukono, someone picks even, when ID. even you are running for Mukono, and whoever is running, I think you need to find a way of tackling the NRM juggernaut so that you can get people who are there and come on your side. But when you get from FDC to, to, <laughs> to NUP, from NUP to DP, you are still within the group that has been defeated four times. And guess what? <laughs> you can actually be defeated again. Patrick. But, but, but let me... No, uh, no let just me. a minute. Yes. Nobody is fishing people from DP and FDC. People who believe in change. If they were crossing from DP and going to NRM, then you'd be worried. But if someone crosses from Democratic Party, because of maybe some kind of injustice that actually exists in that party, and then joins maybe people power, because they believe they're actually going to be able to have a bigger platform, you yeah. will not be able to blame them. You ask yourself, I'm not what blaming is happening them. in the I'm, not, I'm not blaming them But even them the other all. thing, Patrick, First of all, you have a right to go to wherever you Patrick, are. Patrick, before I'm looking at, 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 at the, this whole idea of change. Yes. Because ultimately, it's going to be the same group versus them and them. Unless Patrick. you are able to, to tell, you know, to, to tell all these, all these guys who go to Chiangkwanzi. What I want to assure come. you, Patrick, is... Uh, you, you need to convince all those fellows <laughs> Patrick, who go to Kwan Chiangkwanzi. I, mm, yes. I want to assure you that 75% of the people who go to Chiangkwanzi, mm. in NRM, even those ones are existing, do not actually support any NRM genuinely. No, I was in Chiangkwanzi 75% of those ones actually what? go there either for survival, mm -hmm. either to protect their businesses, either okay. to get money to support their candidature, no, because they know that nobody is going to support them. Okay. But no, I want no, to tell no, you, no. what I want to tell you is that... That's wrong. Even within the NRM... I was there for, for, for even two, within the for three NRM, months. Yes, please, it's my time. Even within the NRM, I want to assure you, Patrick, 65% of the people That's within the NRM support change. And they feel there's need for change in this country. That's they will not be able to come out and say they're going to go into people power. They won't even be able to come out we because be they're saying, cowards. We should because be they are it. cowards. We should be but they it. still believe that change is necessary in this country. They still believe that when they go to the hospital, they'll still find a poor health care system. What, what, what they'll still the find a poor what education the system. Cowardice? They'll still drive if, through if the Lydia, roads if a Lydia that are poor quality Yango, roads. If a Lydia Namayengo can drive in this town, Mm -hmm. With the beret, mm -hmm. with your old paraphernalia, and, and you go home and sleep and come out and nothing exactly. happens. Exactly. What would be the cowardice? What the cowardice for? Patrick, but, but hold on, hold pa Patrick, on. The hold on to your point there. I'm going to come back to that. I, I just want to come to Gweni because, you know, there are people who seem to have known. I, I, by the way, are you in NRM or not? <laughs> She's in NRM. I'm in NRM. So yes. I, oh my God, I think that disturbs the soul of you. <laughs> Of my friend, because how there are people who have served in NRM at the highest uh, echelons of power, including a general like your late father, people who have known NRM more than you do, but trusted it less. Why would you do that? Uh, people who have molded you, people who have shown you the example, who have served the NRM at the highest level in your own home. Trusted it less. <laughs> Why would you? It wasn't the trusting it less. Yeah, because I, I didn't want to bring it. In, but anyway, you carried him over there. He was he started <laughs> the farmers' party of Uganda. Yes, there was exactly. a political NRM. He could have moved into it. Uh, you see, a, po a political party is. This is what they say. Somebody turning in their grave. Why would you do that? <laughs> 
Don't say that. A political party uh, always has people that follow it. So that was his political party, okay. and it served his interests as uh, any other leader. NRM serves my interests, and I think that's where I belong, because I've, I've, I was born in NRM, and it is still in existence. I haven't felt uh, something pushing me out of NRM. I still have a lot of love for NRM. I've, 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 I've survived uh, through NRM. And the your other one was... Your, your businesses are thriving through NRM. Yes, my businesses are, are going thriving. on That's very why well. That's you're in NRM. Uh, my one, life one, one at a time, Lydia. My life is really moving on well with because NRM. In NRM. So I really cannot say that I have any problem with... Uh, uh, my father having a political party and me Gwenny being in NRM. Anyway, uh, that's uh, in all fairness, you have a choice. Yes, exactly. And uh, in all f fairness, none of us here who chose our parents. And neither can we choose our siblings. But we can choose our parties. That is settled. We're not going to get there. Yeah. That is settled. If anything, it was my bad. So, now, I, I, have you been to Karamoja? Have you been to Wundubuyo? Have you been to Ngezi where I come from? Kenyoju, in other words. Yeah, I've been to Kenyoju. So, what are the... Okay, ladies, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. And, and when we come back, we're going to ask more. But then I'm going to open the line as much earlier so that the young people of Uganda, and particularly for you, the young people of Mukono and the elders, can ask questions to you. Because this is not about me, it's about you and them. I want you to have a conversation with them. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guests tonight are Lydia Namayengo Njuba, who's running for District Woman MP Mukono, Gweni Murunji Vidaro, running for Youth MP Western Region, and Oliver Mutesi, running for National Female Youth MP. Uh, okay, so moving forward. I, you know, the, the numerical strength has been exploited by other people to have their ends. And uh, I've seen young people run around and they are supporting either, you know, but if you look back in the 60s and the 70s, including the time when your parents perhaps were young cadres of NRM, during their age, they were focused and they could, they were assertive and they stood up to ch change or solve the problems of your generation. Yes, I know the three of you have come out and you want to maybe look into the problems of the generation that we have. But largely, most of the young people today seem to be in a slumber. What causes that? Well, um, first of all, I would say situations differ. What was in the 60s, people were clobbered, killed, uh, people were so we know when he's being killed on streets. So people know. Ask the, the people of Kasese <laughs> um, years back. In fact, they were killed in big numbers. Um, Go to Nansana a few months ago. No. They were shot in broad daylight. Go no, to Arua. No, those are those are those are very compared to what you've One too me. many. No, 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 no. I don't wish for many, but what I would yeah, say... Yeah, even one is just too uh, many. It's, uh, those are actions of a few individuals who are actually being held accountable. Uh, and, uh, they're being uh, held um, responsible for their actions. I'm not... But you've asked me about the 60s. You know what was Yeah, I, what I asked was, like, we have specific so challenges that we face as a people of Uganda no, I'm, now. I'm, I'm Every time Uganda was having a problem, we're having challenges. There, we have seen a generation rising up to solve those problems of the day, but we don't see the kind of, you know, you know, you know, gusto coming from the young people, energy, to rise up. So, uh, which even though I recognize that here we are, the three of you yeah. at least have come so up. The, the but largely, most people seem to be in the hibernation. No, 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 no. But we are there. The, 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 the. the the 60s had their own generation that needed them to go to the bush mm -hmm. to, to to overthrow the government. They were killing people, they were terrorizing people, raping women, uh, stealing people's property and all that. 
But now the issue at hand needs brains. We need to sit down. The war we need is a brain war. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go physical. That mm -hmm. the issue is about unemployment. And we are here at war. By, we are exchanging ideas. This is war for the brain. So we are coming here to exchange ideas. By. That's why I'm saying that we have issues of unemployment. How do we solve unemployment? We have two clusters of young people who are employed, the uh, uneducated and the educated. And that's why I'm coming up with solutions. So, so within I'm the structures, hard. Um, uh, Oliver, within the structures of NRM, where you, where you fall, having been given the opportunity to lead for more than 35 years, you want to extend that to 40, is that, is that time enough for you to have realized the problems of unemployment and look for a solution? And if you can't, why can't the young people of Uganda say, you know what, enough? You've done your part. This is where you stop. This is where your capacity is. Enough to the government? And that's where we are coming up. Enough to the government or to... Because I would, I would expect you mm -hmm. to have some kind of holy anger <laughs> and tell people in the higher uh, hierarchy of the party that, look, you have failed A, B, C, D. Well... Probably uh, Ugandans need a change. Uh, uh, what I would say is that uh, just like any other... Uh, America is the biggest democracy we have, right? It still has problems. It has still has problems. So you cannot, you cannot say that... Uh, because we have challenges, and Americans still have unemployment, they still have health care issues, they still have this. And these are police of the world, these are persons we are looking at. So, issue at hand should be, we come up with solutions, me and you. The change of guards and change of faces, I believe, will not bring so much at hand. As long as young people, we have not come out and said this is what we demand for. So, this is why I've come up, and I'm saying that we are coming up with solutions. The war should be the war of brains. We should okay. sit down and come up with workable you, solutions. Okay. Not these things of saying, want, we need to change. I just want this to hear all of you. Uh, Gwenny, do you think you compare your generation to the generation of, of, of the Mujisha Montus, of the General Viraros, of the General Musevenis, to the generations of the Obotes, of, of Benedict Kiwanukas, of you know, Kangave, to rise up to the occasion and face the problem of a nation like they did the young people today do you compare um i think that comes with leadership our leadership has a uh, bit failed what has failed it is us the people who are in leadership and that's why us the young people are now coming up to actually be leaders maybe to change something we cannot compare ourselves to those people that you've mentioned the magisha montos and the others they were actually, uh, uh, I should say, they were very good leaders at, at their time. So I think uh, if, if even us, we really need to have a lot to change that maybe they've not changed. At least we all know that uh, China sits for 90 days to plan for their country. Uganda, we've not done that. Actually, what we do is to fight, stand on the tables, do this, do that. And I think that's why as the And I can see you fighting people, hard to, to join the fight. <laughs> no, it's really or not... Turning uh, up, no, that's why oh. we are coming up as the young leaders. Maybe there's something big we really want to change. And I think that's what we want to change. We would want to see actually our, our leadership going up to maybe where those people, uh, what they did and what they did not do, and we go uh, past what they did. Okay. Mm. Uh, Lydia, when you... In assuming you, you and, and I think probably you'll carry the day in Mokono and, and then you are declared winner. But look, 90%, at least the current 10th parliament, 90 or 80% or so is NRM. And uh, in most cases, decisions are actually not taken in parliament here. Decision can be made in an NRM caucus. Mm -hmm. and, and or even in state house. Yeah, and you go there with vigor, uh, you know, you're full of hope and all that. I wonder what can be done so that really the person with a better argument on the floor of the house can win. Not necessarily for people to go because they also have a choice. They are part in power and uh, be in a caucus and then you just come and vote and think pass. What can be done differently? Patrick, before I go actually to what can be done differently, I would want to make a comment on why the young are not rising up. The question that you actually just asked earlier on. My friend here has said that young people are coming up today. That's why they're coming up to take up leadership positions. But I want to tell you, Ghanans, 
that any young woman or man who comes up today and still joins the same political party that has been in power for 35 years and has not been able to advocate for the unemployment that they're actually talking about, for the farming, for the price regulations, for the market of the agricultural products, is actually, actually that person becomes a useless mammal within the same political setting. Because this person has not been able to come and realize that there's a problem. If you come and join thieves who have been in power, mm -hmm. and then you come and be part of the same thieves, then actually you've also been promoting thieves. So you need to understand that the generation today, the problems that we're facing today, re re initially there were actually problems of people who were actually fighting and went to the bush to fight. Today we are saying that we are going to fight using our vote and actually using our national ID. And we are calling upon every young person to come and rise up. When young people rise up today, because it's not actually true that they're not rising up, they're rising up. But every time they rise up, these daughters of the generals are the same people who are suppressing the same young people who come to rise up. <laughs> these daughters of the generals and their fathers and their others who have built empires in this country are the same people who are suppressing either by killing, either by yeah, arresting, we, we just, either we just, by talking we just about all these kinds of people. We just agreed on this show that it's not right to keep referring to what because you Lydia and me Kamara and these other ladies none of us chose our the parents pa we never chose our parents yes exactly. let's leave them out yes. but we at least but, now but, 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 but we issue, have chosen our parties but the issue, let's go with Patrick, is mm. boy, what the issue I wanted to bring about is militarization of politics okay when the military intervened into the political affairs of this country when the military came up and as a gang to capture leadership, to capture politics, to capture governance in this country, everything changed. So even when young people want to come up and rise up to fight for what they believe in, to fight for the economy, because what is challenging young people today is poverty, is unemployment, is security, is jobs. So the questions that need to be answered are not questions of the war, of the gun, of the military, but they are questions of leadership that is actually understanding the problems of these people. Now let me go back to the other issue that Patrick you mentioned the coca system of governance. Mm -hmm. But even when you come up with so much energy and so much vigor, one of the things that we actually recommend, we believe that we can be able to actually have many constitutional amendments to ensure that if we are able to amend the constitution of Uganda, not to focus on the coca system of government, but focus on members of parliament, mm. not by how many hands actually have come up to support a given amendment, how many hands have come up to support a given bill, but the quality of issues that are actually raised up against a given motion, I think that actually will be able to come up very well. But even within the NRM, there are some members of parliament who would be willing to support an amendment, a bill or a law that is for the people. But unfortunately, because they're held captive within the same political party that they're actually coming from, some of them end up going astray. That is why for this time we're calling upon all Ugandans yes. to rise up and vote against the NRM, to rise up and vote for leaders who are not within the same political party that has actually been able to make themselves for the, the last 35 years. Because even when you vote Chagrony as a president, and you still leave the same members of parliament, you won't actually have been able to make up any change. Okay, it will um, still be the same parliament for the same members of parliament who are actually going to be passing the same laws and the same kinds of things. All right, uh, 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 Olivia, you know, because you said you want to talk on employment, yeah. and I just want to borrow from her and another person here was asking, how do you solve the issue of unemployment among young people when they themselves seem not to be, you know, energized to demand, to come up and challenge the status quo where it needs to be challenged. Because you need to act with the active people for you to have results. Uh, well, uh, I would suggest that uh, we need to have mindset change. Um, I guess it should be everyone's uh, obligation, every leader's obligation, that we move out there. Uh, Lydia, you don't tell people to be angry to be angry at everyone, to be upset. No, you don't no, no, tell no, no, people no. to be angry. Just encourage them to, to, to be patriots, to love okay, their country. Even Jesus Christ was angry but, at one but point Patrick, in the temple. No, no, no. No, no, a woman to love her. So long as it's a uh, woman. The things that no, you do as a government uh, in power I would make like a person to either love you uh, or not love you. You have really tried to make people up angry. Okay. Okay. That's the people. Yeah, well, just, we shall uh, love the government. Yes, lady, one at a time. Please, protect me. Um, so I was just saying that uh, you shouldn't drag young people into this anger. You should just make them uh, to love work and uh, to make sure that um, uh, they, when they go to work, those ones give an opportunity. They do it passionately and uh, they will keep advocating for more to do what? To enter the working environment. As we create solution for employment, as I said, uh, those who are in business would like to advocate for tax relief or tax holidays, just like the way they do for investors. They give you one year, you don't pay tax, and then you, you do what? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you take off, and, uh, and uh, you, after taking off, you 
you, you start paying tax. Uh, I think that would be number one. Number two, as he talked about, we need to create markets. Bubu, you know, the president is always talking about Bubu, but we are not implementing it. Uh, I had an experience during the youth livelihood program where young people would be given money. You mean buy Uganda, build Uganda? Yes, okay. uh, they would be given money and then they need to pay it back. <coughs> but their let products. me ask, what, what is <coughs> Uganda uh, so moment. much producing so that mm. you can buy no, and, uh, and build? That is no, I'm, giving an example. I'm going to give you an example. <laughs> no, I'm going to give you, you an example. You think Uganda is not doing any much, mm. but uh, what I can tell you, we have so many young people who are innovative out there. Mm -hmm. For example, when we, I had experience in leadership where I was moving, that would find government would give young people some money for startup capital. They come up with um, welding, carpentry, brick making, soap making. Uh, these small industries. Cottage industry. Yes. We have done that. So, uh, but then the people, the first people who should get bucket for these young people, this the like uh, districts and all that, they would be the first ones to crucify them, telling them their their goods are substandard. So, if young people are given an opportunity to you buy things from them, it will create uh, okay. opportunity for them to sell and then make more other things. When it, there have been projects of government of Uganda, I think, um, through the Ministry of Gender, something called the Youth Livelihood Program. Oh. I wonder if I in your district, uh, I don't know which, but whether the young people have been able to take advantage of that or how you would propose it is energized or even changed. Yeah, uh, YLP, yeah, it's there. It has been in my district, uh, but sadly enough, I actually visited one of uh, three of my friends who are given cows, for example. And this is why actually, in the first place, I was talking about the skilling of the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, the government is giving us what to use, but they are not giving us the skills on how to use these things. I visited three of my friends who have cows that were given to them by the government through ILP. And I am telling you, Mr. Kamara, it was so frustrating knowing that Actually, all the cows were suffering from uh, the ticks. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, tick. They were infested with ticks. Yes, and it was after like two weeks, and these people could not tell. So why I'm saying this? It's because other ticks are so visible that you can see. It. You can see them. It's not that everyone can see them, and more so in the Frisian cows. Basically, you'll not see them. You'll see the cow falling down, and it will die off, just because we've not been skilled about how to look after these things. Uh, when I looked at that, actually it's when I came up to, to say we need to advocate for uh, skilling more than giving us things that we can really not use, put in use. Yes, they are giving us things, uh, what cows, goats and whatsoever, but basically when you do not tell me how to use these things, I will fail. So I am advocating for skilling more than giving us uh, preparing, materials. Preparing them so that they can use. But, but uh, Lydia, the, we should be having, you know, extension, agriculture extension workers, whose job I think should be giving such professional uh, knowledge to people who are, who are farming, but we don't have them. If you were to be an MP, uh, how would you help in trying to see that the extension services are up and running and are vibrant. First of all, Patrick, it's not true that we actually don't have extension workers. So many young people, so many women, so the, many the, men well, have gone to universities to study these skills. They actually have the skills. But the only problem is actually on the leadership. The leaders have not been able to put into the budget the need to actually fund and put in place agriculture extension services at every part. You know, it is the job, appropriation. You know, appropriation is the work of, of parliament. Right? Yes. 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 And that's, that's the parliament you're going to join. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. Is mm -hmm. what, that's what I'm saying. <coughs> that mm -hmm. we, it's not actually necessarily true that we don't have the extension services. We actually have people who have done agriculture. We have people who have gone to seminaries to study agriculture. And they're willing to offer these services. But whenever there is no government will to fund into the national budget, no. it, through the Ministry of Agriculture, Shouldn't to fund the these services, fund. to ensure that these people can go out and have the skill, then there's going to be a problem. And then secondly, 
we have seen skilling, the program called Skilling Uganda, but we have never seen the results come out of this. It has either been politicized by, by supporting only the NRM people, or it, it has either been suppressed by ensuring that even the money that has been put there has been stolen through bribery and corruption, and it has not been able to work out. If we put this to be part of the curriculum of the education, through the Ministry of Education, or maybe through the National Council of Higher Education, and say skills should be part of the compulsory subjects or course needs to be taught either in the primary school or in the secondary school or even in the university, that will be part of us. And you don't need to have a separate budget, for example, if you do not actually have to have the budget. It will still be part of the school curriculum, mm -hmm. so that from the secondary school, the primary school, to the university level. If the Ministry of Education can actually adopt that, and the National Council of Higher Education, it will be a good thing. But since it has not been able to adopt that, even when they put up a different program for skilling, it has not been able to roll out nationally. Okay. So I think that as leaders or legislators are going to, into power, we would be able to think about how do we ensure that skills, <coughs> not only crafts making, not only agriculture, not only candle making, but all kinds of skills. If every Ugandan actually has a skill that they learn, learn from primary, no matter what kind of school that you, uh, level of class that you drop out from school, we shall be able to have solved an employment question in this country. Gwenny, are, are you one of those who are advocating for the change? Maybe thought over whole of the curriculum because many people have said you go to <coughs> through university but you, you come out with nothing. You, you have the skill, you have knowledge to know but, not, but you don't have knowledge to do. Uh, your hands. That's basically something that we create our own selves because I am sure if uh, Olive went to school to do political science, then she has the skills to basically legislate. If someone went to school to do engineering, we should have the skills to engineer. So uh, to me, I think um, it's us, the people, that do what we want most. I, I, I didn't do agriculture as, a, as, as, as something in school, but right now I love agriculture, and I can do it to my best. So if Mr. Kamara woke up today and said, I am, I am doing journalis journalism, then that means you're good at TV. So uh, to me, I think uh, it's basically what we want. As, you as, have to follow as, your passion. Yes. If your passion is your profession, much exactly. better. Exactly. When, uh, when your passion is TV, basically you do TV. But sometimes you find... Uh, I, maybe I did political science, but right now I feel farming can take me uh, places. I feel maybe there's something good in business that I, 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 I really need to go for. So okay. That Ladies, this is what we're going to do. Does we're that mean that Oliver has failed to be creative because she's a master's degree holder, but then she doesn't have a she job? She has two master's. Yes, two masters degree holder, and then she Wait, doesn't have a job. That means that that's no, that means we all know about unemployment. Yes, okay. yes. But you talk about creativity mean, and innovativeness. It doesn't mean because you did not because actually study agriculture. Has, um, very many uh, degrees and whatever mm. that she has to get a job here. That means she's failed she to be creative. Okay. Something for herself. All right. That's what uh, I'm trying to all say. right. All right, ladies. We're going to take a break, and when we come back. I'll open the lines so that you too can be a part of this discussion. You're going to see the numbers on the screen. Please pick a phone and call us and tell us what you think. But should you be in disagreement, I ask you to disagree with respect. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are Lydia Namayengo Njuba. Gweni Murunji Viraro and Oliver Mutesi. Now, this is your moment when you can become part of this discussion, and um, you will see uh, shortly the numbers coming on your screen. Uh, you pick a phone and you tell us what you think so that uh, these ladies who are vying for different positions can be able to respond to your questions or react to your comments. But please keep it civil, and should you be in disagreement with them, I repeat again, you can disagree with respect because human beings can always disagree. Um, okay, so the biggest part of a population is engaged in agriculture. However, they all it's get less funded. The smallest part mm, of the national of the budget. budget. Does that make sense? Well, um, that is why uh, the reason why I included it in my in my manifesto. Yes. Is uh, because I, I saw the gap. Mm -hmm. And here I came, I said, you know, we will think 
government, we should have, you know, uh, parliament is about legislation, it's policies. So we should have a policy that specifically is going to fund <coughs> agriculture, but young people, advocating for young people to be in agriculture, because we are the biggest population and we are the, uh, the most energetic force in this country. But uh, it's sad that you find that uh, young people are not engaged in agriculture. Probably, if we come up with a fund specifically targeting agriculture, in three sectors I talked about, fish farming, uh, animal husbandry, and uh, farming itself. Mm? This, first of all, it will, it will save us from this flooding of streets. Young people are flooding on streets. There's a lot of, uh, there's high crime rate that I think most young people leave villages coming to town thinking they have gone to seek for green pastures. When they reach Kampala, it's probably not what they thought would be in town. They don't want to go in the villages and they end up on streets. Okay. They don't want to go, because there's this term, uh, those of us who grew up from villages, where people <coughs> say like, ah, you can't go back to the village, people think you failed to, to manage Kampala and they will laugh at you. So people, they end up getting trapped in town, they can't do anything, they can't go back to villages. At the end of the day, bec they become criminals. Well, I mean, they have a lot of br drug abuse. I think you've seen young people on streets, there's what they call aviation fuel. Have you seen those kids on streets are sniffing? sniffing. Okay, so um, I right. think agriculture can trap them in the villages. They be productive. Where well, young people well, think at the end of the season, I'm earning one million. They attracted Gweni with a degree. <laughs> but let me, I, um, unfortunately, I was unable to project the number on, your, on the screen there. But maybe I can read it for you so that you are able to, to pick uh, your phone and call. So the number to call is 0414. I repeat that 0414 Five six three, four six two. So I was, I was uh, concluding. Uh, wait, uh, I was saying that if a young person is going to be given five million on the village sale, five million to start uh, a four-acre model, and they expect at the end of the season they're going to make their profit of one million. Trust me, these young people stay in villages because I know young people love working, but sometimes we do not have con the conditions which they work okay. through. Uh, bar them from staying and working. I, I want to, to, to change gear into something else because you introduced the issue of alcohol and drug abuse among young people. Yeah. In fact, it is very serious and if you went almost in every town mm. or urban center in Uganda, you would find a street somewhere where people are abusing drugs, are abusing alcohol, and if you went to Luzira uh, at the National Mental, Butabika National Mental Hospital right now, you'd find that in most cases they have even run out of space where they can have people. And majority of them is not because they are psychotic. Mo majority of them is because they have abused alcohol and drugs. There's a serious epidemic. So how would, we, how would you handle that? If you care to see every town you have gone to, there's a street somewhere for young people, and the number is increasing by the day. Before we know it, this country would have turned into like one of those countries we've had in Latin America. Yeah, 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 true. Uh, but uh, we all know that actually our country has tried to do uh, something big about that, about uh, uh, street kids and uh, uh, drug abuses and all that. No, you, know, you know, drug abuse, uh, Gweni, it's not actually among kids. In fact, it is even high up there in uh, families of the rich, in, yeah. in affluent families, in rich neighborhoods. People in their, in their houses shisha, are, drinking alcohol are actually drugs. hooked on the drug. It is serious. It is even more serious among the rich. Uh, I, I guess, uh, one, Parents are getting so busy mm -hmm. for their children. Not really. To me, I think it's uh, uh, the behavior changes mm -hmm. that we get from the uh, places we grow up from. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're talking about uh, rich kids and what, whatsoever. But maybe we all come from rich families. What, I'm, what I'm trying say. to say, because you, 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 you talked about street kids. I'm like, no, this is everywhere. In fact, it is even more prevalent in affluent communities. You know, there we know of families of the rich who now have their children and they're we totally have. messed because of drugs. And if you went to the only national mental hospital we have, 
especially in the world for alcohol and drug abuse, they can make you wait for even four or five days before you get a bed for your loved one to be admitted there. It is that serious. Mm -hmm. And since it is an epidemic among young people, I'm expecting the aspiring young leaders to think about it and what they can do. But Patrick, you see, one of the given causes of actually young people going into drug abuse is domestic violence. I think that so many families are going through domestic violence. You realize that when uh, one of the partners wants to exert pressure over the other partner, mm -hmm. when some parents want to exert pressure over the other children, without sometimes giving them some kind of freedom to actually decide or make, be part of the decisions, mm -hmm. that would be one of those things. Okay. But also the other thing is that giving too much freedom to some of these children, denying the parents the right or the responsibility to guide their children. It's about the morals, it's about the ethics, it's about discipline in families, and so it's also about children or young people being uh, irrelevant and not having something to do. When some young person actually has a lot of space and time on themselves, when they actually do not have jobs, when they actually lack what to do, you find so many of these added up with peer pressure, you find so many of these going into drug abuse. So what needs to be done, first of all, is to actually ensure that we engage these young people as, many, as much as possible in so many other creative activities. If you are a parent, for instance, in this kind current COVID-19 long holiday that you actually have, and you have young people or children actually who are at home, what kind of service have you given them? What skill are they getting? Can they actually go out and learn how to use a computer? Can they go out and learn how to, make a, a, to be a tailor? Can they go out and learn something else apart mm -hmm. from just being the home the whole day and watch TV? Because when you go out to work, you watch TV for two hours or three hours, and then they'll be able to go away. So it's about the responsibility of us as parents, first of all. And then secondly, it's about also as, about leaders. Leaders is our responsibility as leaders to be able to govern and give guidance and direction towards these aspects. All right. We need to have laws legislating about the use of drugs in this country. Okay. Laws that actually apply okay. to everybody and not to some of the children or All some right. of the people. Uh, ladies, we've had a problem with our... Our technical problem, we can't get our phones right in here. Neither can I project the numbers on the screen. So for that matter, you, you, you've missed out on getting the maybe questions or comments. Well, uh, uh, but uh, this is what we're going to do, um, beginning with you, Lydia. Very briefly, what's going to be your parting shot? My what? Your concluding remark. My concluding remarks. Okay. The people of Uganda and the young people and young women out there, I, I, I do believe that this country has had leaders for the last 35 years. But even when we have those leaders for that five years, we still have the governance and leadership question in place. I want to call upon every Ugandan out there, every change-seeking force, to actually wake up and rise up, to fight against the injustices in this country, to fight against the bad leadership in this country, to fight against the bad laws in this country, to fight against the continuous constitutional amendments, the continuous human rights abuse, to change this country, not because we still think that the leadership in this country cannot perform, but because we think that we still need change. This country deserves better to fight against unemployment, against the bad laws, against bad institutions. And specifically, to the people of Mukono, especially the women that actually we are aspiring as a woman in P. Mukono district, I want to call upon all of you to look at as a candidate, depending on their competence, not just because of the political symbol party they come from, but a candidate who is actually able to uh, get, fight against human rights abuse, to fight for your rights as a, as a candidate, to be able to lobby for service delivery in your area, and also to be able to actually speak out on the issues that are affecting us as the people in this community. Thank you so much. And Gwenny, what's your concluding remark? Uh, as thank you make you, a pitch Mr. for the young Kamara. people of Western Uganda. Uh, to all the viewers and the youth of Western Uganda, I, I, you, we all know that uh, uh, actually our voting days are coming closer and closer. First of all, uh, we haven't uh, gone into the voting. So first of all, I will actually do my official campaign here. Please vote for me on the 10th of October. And uh, besides that, let's stand together, stick to what we want, to the policies of the youth. Let's change something. What we call unemployment can be changed at any time. How can we change it? It's us to stand up and fight for our rights. I'm not saying we fight for our rights in this uh, bad way of uh, uh, maybe people power and what. And it's other people power, people, a bad way of fighting for your rights. Fighting for the rights. But let's stick to what we want. Let's stick to creating more uh, jobs and skills for ourselves, not to wait for the job. Uh, so uh, we, I advocate for uh, job creation than job seeking. 
Okay, thank you so much, Gwenny and uh, Oliver. You, you have the chance of saying the last word. Um, young people are fellow leaders in the youth structures. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Kamara for the invitation. NTV. Uh, <laughs> NTV. Okay. Uh, and uh, I want to employ you to, uh, to stick to demanding uh, for what we, we, we believe in. For example, according to our manifesto, we need to uh, have policies to ha uh, house for both em unemployed youth in, uh, who are educated and uneducated. We need to come up and talk about the, inc uh, the facilitation and inclusion of youth structures. We need to talk about the youth uh, mainstreaming, where we, we can make sure that every percentage of the budget that comes through uh, just like the way gender mainstreaming is, that a budget can't pass without women being included. That is what we need to demand for. And all what I've talked about in my manifesto. So as a closing remark, I would love to request and uh, uh, seek for your vote on the 10th of October as National Female Youth MP. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lydia Namayengo Njua. Thank you so much, Gweni. Maroon Jividaro, and thank you so much, Oliver Mutesi, and all of you, we thank you for your great company. These ladies will be coming to a place near you. Perhaps they will show you uh, their manifestos. Please understand them, give them the audience, and uh, make an informed choice of whom you think it is, is a leader that you deserve. And if you're a young person of Uganda, just know you have the power, because this country, whatever direction is going to take, will be because of what you'll have decided. Are you taking to the best place or not the best place? I beseech you, the young people of Uganda, with using your numbers, your demographic uh, power, do the right thing because we deserve better. Good night and God bless Uganda.